Mountain Green versus Desert Storm, and I guess for the most part it lived up to its billing. It was a great game. I mean, uh, obviously from a defensive standpoint, uh, I think we started off a little slow on both sides of the football. Uh, we made big plays in the first half to come back from a 10-0 deficit. Uh, and I think we picked up steam and momentum in the second half, found a way to slow them down, stop them, had some great plays, obviously the goal line stand, which I'm sure we'll see. And then our ability to run the ball late in the game, I think took some of the steam, wore them down a little bit. And it was a, it was a total team victory. You mentioned the slow start as Arizona jumped out, 10 nothing lead, and against Desert Storm, you don't know if you can get 10 points against their defense, but I thought the, the big interception by Brian Collins, even though he ran it into the end zone and it was called back, that next offensive series stabilized the game for your team when you scored the touchdown. No question. As uh, Charlie Waters said, that might have been the best thing that happened because it gave the defense a chance to get off the field and rest a little bit. I was just glad that we stopped them. We had, it was a momentum shift to take the ball away then obviously when we didn't get the touchdown, I was disappointed, but for us to then drive the ball down the field, get the score, I think made a tremendous difference in the game and certainly was a, was a bigger momentum shift than maybe just a touchdown score and interception. And uh, go figure these statistics. If uh, you had told anybody that before the game your team would have rushed for more yards than passed against Arizona, you probably would have said, no way is that going to happen and us win the football game, but that's exactly what did happen. You rushed for 195 yards. That's the most they've given up all year. No question. I think one of the important things we knew uh, early on, we tried too many passes, really did. It gave them a chance to get after us a little bit with their pass rush. I think it wore them down to a degree, though. And certainly later on, we talked about the fact at, at late in the second quarter and all the way through halftime that we needed to run the ball more. The offensive line felt very confident. Uh, we knew we need to take the pressure off. Tony, his, his rhythm was off early because of the pressure. We need to settle him down and get going. And I think, again, uh, that the line, Ricky Whittle, the whole group together, uh, made a real impact on the game in the second half. Well, the second time this year that your defense has had a goal line stand that uh, maybe won the football game, this time it was in the third quarter, not like UCLA in the final couple of seconds, but it was just as important. Just as important. I was, you know, I, I watched it this morning as I did so. I thought I reminisced back to UCLA, same thing. I mean, four downs from inside the five, and great effort by us, uh, tremendous play by everybody. Rich Rule makes the tackle on that play, but it's all 11 guys doing their assignment and playing run and pass because a fourth and one situation you never know what's going to happen certainly Arizona State got us with the bootleg there so uh, it was great effort and certainly maybe the turning point in the game all right we'll get to the highlights momentarily but first let's check out the Pac-10 scoreboard and the standings as we enter the final week of conference play USC secures a trip to the Rose Bowl with a 28-10 victory over Oregon State in Corvallis the Huskies also secure a bowl berth they don't know where yet as they thrash UCLA 38-14 Flipping the page, Stanford with a victory. They still have bowl aspirations, defeating Washington State in the Palouse. And Arizona State still in the bowl hunt as well as they defeat California, rushing for over 300 yards. And checking the standings, USC, number one, they go to the Rose Bowl. Washington, Oregon, Stanford, Arizona State will take uh, three bowl bursts. We just don't know which ones they will be at this point. And then the next page you can see, out of bowl consideration, UCLA, Arizona, Washington State, Cal, and Oregon State. We will have more on the Beavers later on in this program. All right, let's set the scene down in Tucson. The Ducks taking on the Arizona Wildcats. And excuse me, Coach, for not wishing that we couldn't have spent a few more days down there. Temperature 76 degrees at game time. Virtually no wind, and you got them fired up. <laughs> well, uh, I think that there was a, a lot of emotional intensity. It was their homecoming, their final game for their seniors. I thought we had to come out and match uh, their intensity early, and so I was. We were working on getting fired up. Plus, the heat and everything was a good thing. We got loosened up, but I didn't want us to wear ourselves out. So, uh, not a great kick early. Uh, it wasn't going exactly where we're supposed to. We get good coverage uh, down the field there. Garth White, uh, Derek Barnes, the whole crew uh, cast of thousands on that one. Second and ten play. Great play. Kenny Wheaton comes up off the side. I think uh, Troy Bailey's involved with this too. They're running a delay like a draw, and uh, Troy beats his block on the backside. See him right there. That's Des Bird actually uh, in there. And uh, again, uh, Kenny Wheaton, the warrior with the club and everything, uh, still in on that tackle. Good pressure. Good balls tipped and again, almost intercepted. Uh, we had a couple of those on that day, and we get good pressure on Dan White the whole day. They punt it away. You can't move it. They get it back, and they'll come up with a, a big fourth down play here to keep a drive alive. Yeah, we're. 
they're driving a little bit early. We great stop here to get to. I think this is the third down play, and uh, Kenny Wheaton stops him short. Fourth and one. They run a play action pass. We're in man to man. We're trying to cover all the holes, and uh, Kenny gets beat on the outside. Makes a great effort to come back and catch Mike Lucky, who's a big 6'6", 250 pound tight end. It's not a great match any way you look at it. So first and goal. And again, their, their tailback trips there on the quarterback exchange, which is fortuitous for us. A comeback game, we hold them there. Troy Bailey, Jeremy Asher, Brian Collins. Uh, again, great team defense. Unfortunately here, we get uh, hooked on the outside. Reggie can't get him. We were off sides on the play, uh, which didn't matter. They declined the penalty, get that first score. So they get it into the end zone. John Pasoon tacks on the point after, and Arizona leads. 7 nothing midway through the first quarter. Early on, again, I think they came out ready to play, fired up. Uh, they had a lot of emotional intensity, as I said. Uh, big play here. I, I believe it's pass interference. We don't get the call. It's hard to believe that it wasn't. Uh, but they get a gift uh, interception there, and uh, things are going their way at this point. Third down play here. They give it to that big fullback, Miles. Yeah, he's a, he is a load. I don't know how much he weighs, but he's a, a squatty body kind of guy that's tough to tackle. And he ran through about five arm tackles right there. Good job on the outside. Uh, Brian Collins coming up again. Great pursuit uh, that allowed him to come untouched there. Uh, you see uh, Paul Jensen fighting off the block, uh, Bailey fighting off the block. Jensen takes out two blockers, two would-be blockers, and Brian's right there to drag the ball carry down. So it's a loss of two, second and 12. Again, good pressure here. Uh, Brian gets him. It's a crossing route. It's tough for the for the strong safe to cover that tight end all the way across the field. Hold him up short. And again, good team defense. Des Bird gets a tackle there, but much like last week where the running back's got no place to go. And that's a big play because it was a third and one. So the drive stalls and they have to attempt a field goal from 50 yards. Now this guy has a great leg. He's kicked a 57 yarder already this season and from 50 yards it's kind of a chip shot for him and he nails it through and it's 10 nothing in favor of the Cats. Yeah, we, we haven't done a lot offensively and we've played sporadically defensively. We've given up some big plays the things that we said we could not do. We come back draws get some good yardage on the option. He's uh, doing a great job with that play as we are. It's been a very consistent play for us. Notice he couldn't get help from one guy, but another guy would help him up there. Uh, quick pass here. We hit Blake Spence. Unfortunately, knocked out, but Jabri Hodge uh, does a great job of fighting for that loose ball at the bottom of the pile. And uh, we get the ball back. So we get a first down, which is great. And then the drive stalls and uh, Josh Bidwell, great punt here. Josh booms that one, out kicks the coverage a little bit, which we have to be careful of, but we get great response. Great reaction back there. Uh, Lamont Woods makes a shoestring tackle. He had a couple of those on special teams yesterday. They come back and start running the trap inside, and the, the big fullback is uh, busting loose. And again, we're struggling a little bit because they're running the counter and the trap, and what we're doing is uh, giving them one and trying to take away the other. Get the comeback here on Kenny Wheaton. Again, uh, Isaac Walker's there for a, sa a saving tackle. So at the end of the first quarter, not only does Arizona have the lead, the momentum, they have the ball, but Oregon begins to turn things around on the very first play in Oregon territory at the 36. Brian Collins steps in a great interception. They had run the wide receiver screen several times, and Brian, with success, Brian judged this, stole the ball really from the receiver, does a great job. Unfortunately, we block behind and, and get our hand caught in the face mask. Uh, not a very smart play, but great individual effort here. Steps in. Traps the ball on his hip, takes it, and then just outrace everybody. And there's really no question at this point we're going to score. Unfortunately, the block occurs, and we've talked about it many times, never block behind the football. Mm -hmm. So the interception stands. That's the good news. The bad news is the offense has to come on the field, and they have to march it all the way in for a score. You see the face mask personal foul against the Ducks from the point of the foul, and that was way back at, uh, I don't know, around the 50. Right. We lost about, obviously, the touchdown, but also about 15 to 20 yards of field position just on that penalty alone. Mm -hmm. The great part is we start to get on track a little bit offensively. Ricky here on a zone play, and we're just running to daylight in a sense on that play. Uh, come back. Roz steps up in the pocket. This is a great effort. The ball is actually overthrown. Ricky makes a diving catch on that backside. This ball is intended for Blake Spence, I believe. And you see Graz stepping up in the pocket here. A lot of people flying around, and this was a, what we call X cross. That's actually Josh Wilcox. Goes through his hands, and again, Ricky is right there. 
big, big play. And again, I said we didn't play well, but we made big plays early, which really kept us in the game. But the uh, play action pass here, we get Mac one on one. Great job, great effort to almost get in the end zone. Nice run after catch, uh, and puts us in great field position. Good protection here. You can see this again. Play action, moving the pocket. Tony's got time to set his feet and throw the ball and hits uh, Mac right on the run. Makes a move there to avoid one guy. Gets some actual push and momentum and uh, comes up about two yards short. So it uh, took only two plays to put it into the end zone from there. Ricky Whittle over the top following A.J. Jokes. Ricky breaks the play and then the jump play. You can see it, uh, the official on the right side. We, we decided to go with the jump play because we didn't get the call last week on the dive, but you see him go over the top there, push back outside, but he did break the plane with the ball. And now with a point after, you're right back in it, 10-7. Right, and again, it, it allowed our defense to go off the field. We took advantage of the turnover, which is very important, and again, got some momentum back. So now I think your defense also got a little fired up about the situation yes. as well. B.J. and Schmitty there combining to stop uh, the run on that play. They run a draw play, and we stunt right into it. Uh, Asher and Rule both, and, and Derek Barnes in there on the play. We'd overrun a draw earlier, so they did a nice job of settling down here, breaking down in the hole. And we got three guys there, and no, no place for the running back to go. Third and 12. Third and 12. We get pressure, and again, uh, Derek Barnes and Schmidt combine on the sack. You see, we just collapse the pocket. We're bringing the backers who attract, allow us to be one on one. Great job by Derek Barnes throwing his guy. He and Schmidt combine or, or meet at the junction of the quarterback there and take him down. Ironically, the only sack of the game for either team. Uh, this is a nice uh, job by Tony. Gets rid of it. Uh, Dameron Ricketts makes a great adjustment as the ball's in the air to come back for it. Their DB lost sight of it. You can see he gets pressure. We get split right there. Tony steps up, delivers the ball, and again, takes a heck of a shot on that play. But to his credit, he's an extremely tough guy, and he's not very big, so he better, better be ready to take those shots. I keep telling him, get some meat on those bones. <laughs> well, uh, that adds to his speed, Yeah, that sleight of frame. Nice little job by Ricky there, dancing through the hole, making the first guy miss, carrying the second tackler for several yards afterwards. Nice little job. We almost had a big hole right there. There, The guy on the tight end slides inside, just trips Ricky up. Now you're moving, trying to, if not to tie the game, uh, go ahead. Great Ryan job. Perry Smith in for one snap there. Yeah, Tony got hit on the elbow. It's, it's funny, Pony couldn't feel anything, so we had to get Ryan in there. Ryan did a great job. Came right off the field. He also had substitute KP. Kevin Parker comes in, does a nice job on this run. Said he'd have scored if he didn't look back. I said, don't look back then. <laughs> see old Satchel Page. Don't yeah, look behind you. Exactly. Somebody will be gaining this on This is a tackle trap. You can see Dave Weber coming over. See good blocking downfield. Nice move right there. Makes two guys miss. A uh, good block by Jabri Hodge down the field. He's got to get that ball in the other hand so he could use that hand to, to push off on that guy. Down there, run the option again. And we A little bit better blocking, we might have scored. Graz gets down to that half foot line. Uh, unfortunately, we stall there. We have a negative play. We're forced to kick the field goal, but the great thing is now the score's tied. We come back. So you come back with three and a half to play in the second quarter. Then things got a little interesting. Uh, Isaac Walker comes on the safety blitz, causes the ball to be thrown up. Brian Collins gets the second interception of the day. Nice job. Again, great pressure. You can see we're bringing the safety blitz. He comes untouched, gets a full head of steam, hits White just as the ball is released. It waffles up in the air. You might call that a dead duck. I don't know. But uh, Brian gets that one, steps out of bounds, which is good. Save time for us. But you couldn't move the ball right there and had to punt it. Now they come back with maybe another opportunity. You take a couple of timeouts in here as well. Big play by Troy Bailey there to stop it. And uh, again, sack here. Actually, end up not being a sack because he broke out of Rich Rule's hold or grasp. We did take the timeouts to save. We thought we'd get one more shot. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. The game tied 10-10 as we pick it up. What a great play by Bidwell just to catch that ball and then Tad on top of that, a great punt. Josh uh, is a great athlete and he obviously played receiver early in the year until he had to take over all the punting charge. But this is a left-handed catch, great leaping, one-handed catch, just super uh, confidence, concentration, control to get that punt off and not just to handle it, but get it off and, and kick it very well. I think this also uh, was uh, fumbled if I'm, yeah, we almost get a shot there. Derek Barnes is right there, but they do recover. So Arizona with the ball. 
We pick it up. It's a fourth and two, and this is one of the best executed fake punts you will ever see. They do a great job and great tackle here by uh, by Pat Johnson, but they do a great job with this play. We, they run a lot of fakes. We've seen the other, but that reverse was the first time, and they executed extremely well. Our defense holds right there. Uh, B.J. Uh, Asher, uh, Derek Allen, just a whole group of people there. Same thing. They were fighting in. Gang Green showing up again. Uh, they were challenged by Desert Swarm, and they wanted to show that they could do it too. Uh, they get the field goal though again, which allows them to go ahead and uh, put us back in the spot a little bit. I also threw it back in our court though to respond. Well, and you do come back a little uh, the T counter boot to Aaron Jelks uh, had not worked earlier because we got a little, a little pressure, but do a better job this time. Uh, Tony sells the fake, uh, fake inside to Ricky. Bounces it, uh, nice toss on the money, and then Aaron again, uh, good yards there, uh, making sure that the first guy doesn't get him down. Gain of eight, and a first down. Run the sweep play now, good blocking up front, Jelks and Reed, and then Ricky, nice job here, almost breaks loose, this guy drags him down, but great job to get some more yardage, and the guy Pat, and that's two great warriors playing against each other. Run the uh, stretch pass, hit Josh Wilcox coming across from the backside. You can see the fake here. Selling the onside play, coming back. We have two choices, onside tight end, backside. Again, just gets that ball through 90's hands, and Josh scoops it as he goes across. So another first down. We run the tackle trap again. Same play, great move by KP. Again, he's got to get that ball in the other hand so he can use that arm to stiff arm. Might have gotten the end zone. That's something, again, a young guy. He'll work on that, but it's a great hole, great job. Again, you can see Weber coming across, great block there. KP making that guy miss. Good blocking down the field by Spence. And then again, it's off to the races. And KP fresh-legged does a nice job here. Yeah, big gain, 35 yards. And on the very next play, uh, we run a stretch pass again. Same idea, find Jelty right in the corner. His man uh, slipped and fell as he started to try to react to the run fake. Uh, again, we're selling the run. Great idea. Great blocking by Tossi there. Come on back there. Sprite, who had slipped and fallen down uh, on the jokes. It just bumped him. Again, gets, touches two feet down the end zone. Great play. Get us the lead back. Nice little drive. And an important point after. No question. Nice job by Josh Smith and the whole group again. Great protection. Great kick. Uh, got the lead, and it's more than a three-point lead, which does uh, play a factor later in the game. An 83-yard drive. Unfortunately, they come right back. Nice catch and throw. Good hit by Isaac Walker, but we can't shake the ball loose. We get another one, throw the fade, and again, great catch. Alex, this ball bounces out. And again, I, I question, but they said the ground caused a fumble. He landed inbounds. Uh, they get another play here, which is very difficult for us. Uh, they Right here, and I'm not sure where they call the late hit on, uh, I guess, on David Coyle in the end zone. Uh, Kept in bounds, I, I, I still think that's very difficult. They get another nice play, the inside trap or lead play to the fullback. Now it's second and goal. Second and goal and Gang Green again stands up there and does a great job wearing our 99 group. Third, uh, this is actually the second down on the replay. Yeah, you can see it in there coming over top. Asher hits him right, just leaps over. Great play, Brian Collins seals it down from the outside. Uh, the whole crew, and I can't say enough about this goal line stand. Again, rule that time, Asher that time. So that's the third down play. Here it is again, slow motion replay. You can see again, just great push, great surge by our D linemen to allow our linebackers to come untouched. Fourth down. Fourth down play. They go for it. Our guys do a great job. And again, they're pretty excited about that. And that is our play of the day. Play of the day is a great goal line stand at a crucial time in the game. We're in our 99 group. Uh, we're playing man coverage here, bringing the safeties off the edge uh, for the bootleg. They're trying to stay inside, uh, keep all the gaps covered. And what they're trying to run is a lead play inside by pulling this guard. Troy defeats his block right here. Jeremy comes up, defeats the guard. Rich has a free shot to come in and meet the ball carrier. And it's a great play by all of us here because we've got to hold the gap. And fourth and one, uh, they can go anywhere, inside, outside, and so it's great technique by everybody here. It's team defense, uh, and again, the key play is that, that Jeremy takes on this block, we defeat this block, uh, Dez takes the guard here, and that 
Rich can come untouched here, meet the ball carrier in the hole, and not allow him to fall forward. Great team play and uh, just super play at the time. Let's take a look at it down low. As the uh, defense holds, you can see uh, coming towards the near side on this play. Again, the tough part is we've been in the situation before. They'd run a play action. You see, again, no chance of getting across that line of scrimmage. We dominate the line, push them back. And there's no chance. And again, our guys are making sure, given the signals as they come off. Yeah, there were, uh, let's see, 16 referees on the field at that time. 11 of them were uh, wearing white shirts. <laughs> you have to punt it out of your own end zone, but the defense comes up big as Bailey forces the uh, intentional grounding here that is lost down and lost yardage as well. Correct. Troy does a great job. Beats his man inside, forces the grounding. It also hits their lineman, which is illegal. It's loss it down. It's a big, big play because it takes them out of field goal range. So you get it back, trying now to gain some additional field position. Run the tackle trap to Ricky this time. Again, uh, Paul Wiggins pulling this time. And you can see the same play we'd run before, a little different formation. Great job there, Weber blocking onside. In fact, really, there's nobody for uh, Paul to block until he's about 8 to 10 yards down the field. Should have given him the ball. <laughs> so at the end of the third quarter, Oregon leading Arizona 17-13. The defense is at controlling the action. Fortunately, that's good for the Ducks because uh, neither team scores in the quarter. This is uh, a third down play. We come up a little bit short. We hit Chris, and he, they, they're double covering him. It's a great pass. Fourth and one, we go for it. And uh, great individual effort by Ricky. We get some good blocks, but he stretches for that first down. I felt we needed to keep the ball right there. We were up more than a field goal, so I wanted to risk it at that point. I felt like our offensive line was starting to take control of the game. Again, another great play by Ricky. Great line blocking up front. And again, we start to push him a little bit. Starting to dominate. Great block by Jokes. Bounces out guy. Uh, Kevin Parker gets outside, makes the guy miss, and steps up inside. We, we uh, don't quite get what we want. Great punt here. Putting out of bounds inside the 10-yard line uh, by Josh Bidwell. We've worked on that. He does a great job. And giving them 90 yards to go at that point was a great idea. Yeah, they have about seven minutes and they need more than a field goal. And they run a reverse and a good play. Uh, we get, again, Jeremy comes over, head butts the guy down along with Brian Collins and uh, could have been a bigger play. We reacted pretty well to that. This was a third and 12 and pass interference is called. That gives the Cats an automatic first down. Very close play. Again, I haven't seen enough to say. I, I'm glad that uh, we're competing for the football though. We're not gonna give up at all. And uh, we bounce this outside, make him come back. He gets more yards than I'd like. Uh, again, to, uh, I, uh, excuse me, Gene Jackson on the tackle there. Uh, we get cut. This is a big play, but there's a tackle right there that you see. And uh, luckily, the officials caught it, uh, tackling from behind and brought that play back. Yeah, big play. You see the hold from the uh, spot of the infraction. So they're, they're back to almost where they were at the line of scrimmage before that play. Make a, they make a, cut, a clutch first down there, a clutch conversion. Again, uh, putting the pressure on us. Uh, but again, our defense is going to hold up here. Big pressure that time on the backside. Uh, forced the Aaron throw. Actually got a piece of that one. Another play action pass. This is a great, great play. Kenny Wheaton takes the guy out of bounds. Does not allow him to get a foot down, which is an incompletion in college. And a great play for a guy with playing with one hand. And... Uh, Kenny was hurting after this. I told me, you didn't hit him with your hand anyway, so that's okay. Stay in there. You can watch this. Great job. Gets the foot. The foot comes down out of bounds, so it's incomplete pass. Big play because they would have had it at about the 25. Now it's third down. They pick up about six. That sets up fourth and a long three. And uh, this is a great play here. Uh, I, I believe it's Brian Collins tips this ball. And again, uh, Great job. We had it covered pretty well, but again, this did not give them any chance to complete it. Lamont uh, Woods is on the coverage. You can see Brian jumps here, tips that ball away. Great job. Super play, and I couldn't think of a better time for it. Well, now you uh, need to run off 340, and they don't have any timeouts remaining. Right. They had had to use their timeouts. So we knew we were going to go to the ground. I challenged the team at that point. Hey, give me two first downs. The game is over. And, and uh, the offensive line, Jelks and Whittle, take over at that point. Ricky, again, just get through that crease. Covers up the ball. Again, we got to make sure that we are hanging on to that football. And uh, we do a great job. Ricky up inside. Just pushes. I think that's the first down right there. And uh, at that point, uh, 
there's uh, a lot of joy on our side. Now it's time to talk about the upcoming opponent to Oregon State. The, the Beavers uh, victorious in their first game of the year, but since then they've had uh, rough times, although they've played very well uh, in games. And in most of the games, they just haven't been able to make, it looks like, coach the key play at the right time to win some of those. They've been close. They've played great defense. Uh, they've struggled on and off offensively and uh, have not been able to make the key plays. I think that's a difference in several of their games. But, you know, with this game, as, as I've said in the past, you can throw records out, you can throw statistics out. Those things don't mean anything. It's the Civil War. It's us versus them for state supremacy. And I think that they're going to play their best game as I've told our team every year, every team in this conference has played their best game against us. We need to be prepared for that. Let's take a look at some of the highlights of uh, Oregon State taking on Southern California. The Trojans victorious 28 to 10. But in the second half, Oregon State played them tooth and nail. In fact, I think it ended up being uh, Oregon State outscoring USC in the second half. They ran the ball well. They got on track. You know, they moved from the wishbone to the double slot now to the eye bone. And I would expect probably to see elements of all three in our game. Uh, Raheem Muhammad is playing quarterback now, doing a great job, and he was, uh, he was victorious against it, uh, here a couple years ago against us and uh, does a great job of running the option. And they, they respond to that well, and they play great defense. So they're, they're never out of the game because they can create some things field position-wise on defense. We'll take a look at some of their plays defensively. Larry Bumpus with an interception here early in the third quarter to set up a scoring opportunity. Kane Rogers has had a great year, and the Reggie Tongue and Tom Holmes, those seniors of Oregon State, have really played well. Kane Rogers is a great football player. He's probably one of the best linebackers in the conference. They're the best pressure team in the conference. They do a, a, a myriad of things and they do it differently every week and much like our offense. They come with a different look and come after you and they're, they put a lot of pressure on the quarterback and they play the run very well too. Well it's a big big game. It always is in the Civil War and as Brian mentioned earlier they've won the last two at Otson. You've won the last two in Corvallis so the home field advantage in fact, ironically, and I don't know when this happened last, but the visiting team won every game in the conference yesterday. Did they the really? home team did not win a game, and that's unusual. And so hopefully that's not the case next week. No. For us, the last streak I think that we need to break is that streak here at Otson. We have to reclaim our home turf and uh, do what we need to do to win in this game. And I think the biggest thing, the bowl game doesn't matter to us at this point. It's, it's beating, defeating Oregon State. It's a team that uh, plays you tough. And uh, for whatever the reason, that these games the last four years have been decided by one or two key plays and a lot of times it's been in the kicking game remember two years ago down here they were able to block a punt and so that kicking game in, in which Oregon State has struggled a little bit this year is going to be very important could be a factor certainly the weather probably will be a factor too it's it's been uh, fairly windy wet blustery kind of weather which has hampered our passing game probably played into their hands uh, we can't control the weather but I'll tell you what we're gonna play great football and special teams will be important 